Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, with all respect to Chad Millman, who does a great job, great job, right? These videos here online, on my YouTube account, they don't come from ESPN, right? I do have sponsors here on the page that are embedded by Google, right? So I can't say here with a straight face that I'm not supported by the corporate world. That being said, let's take a different tack than ESPN, and let's try to start a dialogue. Let's make it ongoing, where we try to break down NBA teams and ask the question if the teams, quite frankly, are worth our gambling dollars, right? In other words, I'm not here trying to placate 20 year old athletes. I'm not trying to placate a sports league. Um, look respectful in any way, shape, or form in the hopes of landing a sports league uh, broadcasting contract so I can show NBA games. In other words, I don't have the interests that mainstream media has, and I do think that matters. Right? You always want to follow the money. Right? Rather, my interest is in trying to take money from the casino. Now, that said, I've been researching some NBA teams, and as I like to say, the teams are not who you think they are. The stars are not who you think they are. Right? Many teams have great numbers right on paper but don't have the legs to go the distance. Many stars have high scoring averages, but don't know how to win. And as a result, haven't won in the playoffs, right? You have some guys right now in this league who are trying to get max contracts, who have never made the playoffs, right? So in an effort to separate truth from fiction. Is the team viable? Is this one of the six teams that I should think about putting futures money on on the front end? Let's get under the hood with the Golden State Warriors. Why am I picking the Warriors? It's because as I was looking at NBA futures, I saw that the Warriors actually have the shortest odds. They're a plus 450. I thought that was ludicrous, right, at first glance. Teams like the San Antonio Spurs, the defending champions, are plus 500, right? Cleveland with LeBron James, right, post Moscow, they're a plus 500. So you can imagine I was laughing out loud. You know, I check these futures odds every day. I was laughing out loud when I saw the short odds that the Golden State Warriors, the local team here in the Bay Area, were getting. I thought, how could this possibly be? So I then started looking at obscure numbers, doing my own research. Keep in mind, the Atlanta Hawks just had the longest winning streak of the season, and they're a plus 700, right? The Warriors, by contrast, in the big, bad Western Conference are a plus 450. How could that be? Let me just say my conclusion and let's have a dialogue. In other words, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section to this video, not just for this NBA video, but going forward in the season. Let's make this a gambling community here online. Let's just say that after I looked at the Warriors a little bit more closely, I'm not laughing anymore. The Warriors are real. Right? They're one of the teams you need to keep a close eye on. Put another way, they have a real chance. Right? The sky's the limit. There's going to be a moment this year where it's going to be truth or dare. They're going to be in the playoffs and they're going to be looking across the court at some real team. Right? Like the San Antonio Spurs. And the question is going to be, do they hold up? Let me just say, they might, 
right? Right now, February the 3rd, and keep in mind, injuries change things, don't they? Right, but right now, February the 3rd, let's just say that after looking closely at the Warriors, I can't eliminate them from the conversation of the next possible champion of the NBA. Let's talk about the storm clouds first. The Warriors have a head coach who's never been a head coach before. Now let me just tell you, in general, I normally fade those teams. I just think that the old masters, the guys who have been in this league for a while, who have playoff experience, who've had to get in front of locker rooms filled with men and actually talk with the guys in tough moments in playoff games, right? Those are the guys I like to roll with. I like resumes. I like track records, right? It's no surprise to me that the same characters seem to be popping up in the postseason deep, right? Greg Popovich, Phil Jackson, right? I've just named more than a decade worth of titles, right? Well, let's just say Steve Kerr, bright guy, right? I'm sure he's smart. I'm sure he, you know, knows basketball like the back of his hand. But he hasn't been the head coach. He's been around some great head coaches, but he hasn't been the head coach before. Right? This isn't like Coach Blatt with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Understand, Blatt may not have been an NBA head coach before, but he was a head coach internationally. In fact, one of the secrets of this season is the fact that he used to be the head coach for Muscoff, who has totally changed that Cavalier team. But here's the thing. If you look a little bit deeper on that warrior bench, you're going to see Alvin Gentry. Alvin Gentry used to be a head coach in the NBA for years. In fact, I thought Gentry was one of the league's better head coaches. Right? So, I got to tell you, you know, my concern over Kerr's inexperience as head coach is a bit alleviated. In fact, it's alleviated to a large extent by the fact that he has Alvin Gentry on that bench. Another problem with the Warriors, and it is a problem in my eyes, is the age of the team. Now let's go back to last year. You know the San Antonio Spurs won the NBA title, and their average age was 28.9 years of age. They were one of the older teams in the league. Would it surprise you to know that last year's Miami Heat were even older than them? The Heat are the team they played in the NBA Finals. The Heat were 30.6 years of age. Now, yeah, I'm a bit of a snob. I don't believe in new and different. In other words, you know, I don't believe it's going to be different this time. When I see young teams, I'm hesitant. Just understand that the Golden State Warriors are young. In other words, they average 26.5 years of age. That's young when compared to other teams. The Spurs this year are 29.7. Right? My fear, and it's one we need to think about, is that if Golden State gets to that fork in the road where they're looking across and they're seeing men who comparatively are grown men, men who have jewelry, rings, right? Duncan, Ginobili, Parker, you know the names, right? You know, are they going to wilt? Are they going to lack the maturity of the team they're facing? I believe that that's a question that needs to be asked. Let me say this. I know it'll be controversial. Just understand, though, that more than most teams, the young guys on the Warriors are actually prepared for this moment because some of these guys have been around NBA locker rooms from the time they were little kids. Right? 
Let me say this. Clay Thompson, his father's Michael Thompson. Yes, the Los Angeles Lakers Showtime Michael Thompson. Right? So Clay Thompson has literally been around a father who I'm sure has told him all about postseason success. Right? If you dig into Michael Thompson's background, you're going to find that he was actually the first pick in the NBA draft way back when. Right? Understand that Steph Curry is actually the son of Del Curry, another NBA player. In fact, Del Curry right now is the announcer for the Charlotte Bobcats. Excuse me, the Charlotte Hornets. I guess the names change. you got to keep up with the lingo here in the NBA. Right? I'll just say this. I am concerned about the Warriors' age. But it's interesting that these guys are NBA lifers. Right? Not just basketball players, but two of the key guys. In other words, they're two leading scorers, folks. Almost 50 points per game combined between these two guys. Both of these guys are the sons of former NBA players. And yes, that matters. Because you'll find that the Ken Griffey Juniors of the world, the Barry Bonds of the world, right? they literally were raised around the culture of their sport, as are these two guys. Another concern I have, and I'm not sure if they remedy this, are the turnovers. Namely, Steph Curry. You know, Curry, to me, is doing too much with the team. He's a great shooter. There's no question about it. But when you have a guy who's, you know, averaging the most points on your team, 23 points a game, right? Right? And when you have a guy who's averaging the most steals on your team, 2.1 steals a game, and when you have a point guard who <laughs> is averaging 4.8 rebounds a game, in other words, Steph Curry's doing it all, it's a little disheartening to me that he's handling the ball enough to average 8.1 assists a game. Curry, to me, is a 2. He's not a 1. He's turning over the ball 3.2 times per game. I think you need to be concerned because you get to the playoffs, and I'm just telling you, he's going to have guys like Chris Paul in his face trying to pick his pocket. He does so much for the Warriors that if his confidence takes a hit, if he runs into a defensive master who could slow him down, the Warriors are going to take a hit in the very categories I've just named. I don't like Steph Curry's 3.2 turnovers a game. By the way, if you're a Chicago Bulls fan, you're going to have to explain to me how Derrick Rose is averaging 3.4 turnovers a game. Just food for thought. Well, let me talk about why, in my opinion, you need to keep the Warriors on your Rolodex. In other words, as you're trying to get leverage going forward, the Warriors have to be one of the few teams, barring an injury. Right? If I see Steph Curry get hurt, whew, the team relies on him for so much, the analysis completely changes. But if this team stays healthy, they're one of the few real threats, and I mean few real threats in the league to win it all. You know, it starts at the top. It's hard for me to envision better ownership in the National Basketball Association than Joe Lacobe and Peter Goober. These guys have done a spectacular job. Let me tell you, I've been in the Bay Area for a while. I've seen past Warrior ownership groups. It takes a lot for the Warriors to get Warrior greats like Rick Barry back in the building. These guys are pulling it off. You, When you go to a Warrior game, you understand that you're, you know, in first class, right? There are other great ownership groups in the league. Certainly the San Antonio Spur ownership group is spectacular, right? Mickey Aronson and the Miami ownership group is spectacular, right? This group doesn't have their record of rings yet, right? That could change. I'm telling you, this ownership group deep-pocketed. Peter Guber, for example, is also associated with the new ownership group for the Los Angeles Dodgers. These guys have convinced Jerry West to be an executive board member, in my own belief, is that other than the people running the Spurs, 
you'd be hard-pressed to find a better judge of NBA talent than Jerry West, who put together the Showtime Lakers in the 1980s. Now, let me say this. You know, the stars aren't who you think they are. I'm telling you that they're a group of players that GMs know about, that the public might not. These guys aren't the guys who you vote for on all-star ballots. But these guys are guys who can help you win when you're deep in the playoffs. In other words, you have difference makers out there who the public barely knows about. If you want to see one of the biggest difference makers in this league, let me tell you, one of my biggest regrets is I foolishly let this guy off of my fantasy basketball team. One of the biggest difference makers in this league is an unknown guy on the Golden State Warriors. Right, This is the backbone of the team, Draymond Green. Right Now, for those of you saying who, understand Draymond Green right now is averaging 1.6 steals a game and 1.4 blocks a game to go with eight boards. The guy has range. He can hit the three. Right? This is the kind of guy who's not going to show up among the leaders in categories, but he has a game that's far above average. Right? Just consider him to be your prototypical Jerry West type player. In other words, you see the guy and you understand, two minutes in, this guy's a baller. You understand, two minutes in, this guy is better than advertised. You understand, two minutes in, that this guy is one of the best players on the floor, right? You need to pay attention to Draymond Green. Let me name another guy. Now, how does a guy in less than 25 minutes a night, right, in a league in which it's, you know, they've watered down the all-star selection process. There's so few centers. Understand the Warriors have a guy who in under 25 minutes a night is averaging 1.8 blocks a game to go with 8.5 boards a game. I've been saying this for a long time. Andrew Bogut is one of the best centers in the National Basketball Association. Right now, the problem with Bogut, this is the big storm cloud, is he missed the playoffs last year. Now, understand, as it was, Golden State took L.A. seven games. Seven last year without Bogut, one of their key players, right? Bogut's knee, in my opinion, is one of the most important joints in the National Basketball Association. You need to monitor Andrew Bogut's health. The team's not the same if he's not on the court. Let me point out, by the way, that Bogut's a guy who the Warriors got in a Jerry West-endorsed deal to get rid of Monte Ellis, one of the Warriors' most popular players right just understand that this is why the Warriors are where they are it's trades like that now let me say this too I'm gonna name two other guys who are ringers in other words these are guys who again they're not gonna be on anyone's all-star ballot this year they don't have the numbers right because their roles are limited but these are above average players who flesh out the team, give the team a competitive advantage. Andre Iguodala, you're going to be hard pressed to find a better perimeter defender. And then, of course, a player who, you know, really has haunted this league. You wonder what would have happened to this guy if he would have stayed healthy his entire career, and that's Sean Livingston. Tall for a guard, ridiculous vision. One of the better passers in the league. He's playing less than 20 minutes a game now. Just understand in the playoffs where minutes are precious and you need talent on the court. Just understand that Sean Livingston is there. Put another way, research Sean Livingston's high school career. One of the best high school players in the country. Right? Great player. Lottery pick. Now he's with the Warriors. He's one of these guys in the background that you know if when the Warriors get in big games in the postseason, it's going to be in the foreground. Right? Let me say this, too.
if you look at the numbers, and they're astonishing this year, you're going to find that by a bit of a wide margin, the Warriors have had the best first half of the season in the National Basketball Association. Let's quantify it. Margin of victory. You know the Hawks have had a great first half. The Hawks' average margin of victory is 6.84. Did you know in the Western Conference, think about it, the Warriors are playing Portland, uh, the Spurs, OKC, all of these tough teams in the West. Memphis, the Warrior margin of victory is 11.22, folks. There's no other team in the league with a margin of victory above eight. Right? The Warriors are at 11.22. Let me tell you, too, what's interesting with the Warriors is they're a great defensive team. If you look at obscure stats like effective field goal percentage for opponents against them, they're number one in the league in terms of limiting their opponents' effective field goal percentage. Right? So this team literally is hitting on all cylinders at a time where this season they've had injuries to key players like Andrew Bogut. So let me say this. I was a skeptic. I watched the team. I know the team's young. I know Steph Curry turns over the ball too much. Right? Let's just say that when I started looking at the numbers here, I was a big-time skeptic. I literally laughed when I saw that the Warriors were getting shorter odds than the San Antonio Spurs, the defending champions, a team that's been to the last two NBA Finals, a team that still has guys like Tim Duncan on the team and Greg Popovich, right? I laughed. Then I looked at the numbers and the roster and the logistics of the whole thing and let's just say I'm not laughing anymore uh, my take is that the Warriors are for real for them to fall out of the real category they're gonna have to suffer injuries this team as presently constituted with this level of outside shooting right Clay Thompson Steph Curry two of the very best shooters in the league both of them are gonna be in the three-point contest for the all-star game that's the level of shooting Right With this level of shooting and with these ringers on their bench, right? keep in mind, I haven't even talked about guys like Harrison Barnes and David Lee. Those are good players. Understand, the guys I'm mentioning, Draymond Green, Bogut, Igudala, Livingston, I consider these guys to be ringers, one step up from those other guys. With, with this kind of team, they have legs. Right? As I break down other teams, just in terms of fooling around with futures. right? And keep in mind, I have a clear preference for the Eastern Conference, because I think the road to the finals is easier there. Just understand that the Golden State Warriors have more than caught my attention. right? I'm less impressed by their record than I am by their roster and their potential. That's how I see it on February the 3rd, 2015. Let me hear from you. Let's just say when I started my inquiry, I thought, is this team fool's gold? The answer is no. This team might be solid gold, folks. Take a hard look at the Golden State Warriors. Let me know your thoughts. If there's something about the Warriors that I need to know, that we need to know, the gambling community here on YouTube, right? If there's some part of the Warriors that you feel isn't legit, and keep in mind, this is a team that went to seven games against the Clippers in a series where the Clippers had home court advantage, right? And let me point out, this year the Warriors statistically have a better defense than the Clippers, right? If there's something I need to know about the Warriors, I hope you'll leave it for us in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.